Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Basic Gospel, a media ministry dedicated to helping our listeners hear, believe, and live the good news of Jesus Christ. With Bob Christopher, I'm Bob Davis, and today we continue in our teaching series, The Great I Am. No live phone calls today, but the voicemail system is always open for you at 844-322-2742. If you need answers for the challenges of everyday living, or if there's a Bible passage you don't understand, leave us a voicemail. We always love hearing from you, our listeners, so never hesitate to call. Again, that number, 844-322-2742. But right now, it's Lesson 4 of The Great I Am. And Bob, what do we have today? Well, we have light. Uh, Jesus made the statement in John 8, 12, that he's the light of the world. Whoever follows him will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so we're going to take a deep dive into that particular statement. We're going to look at the context. We're going to look at uh, lots of other passages that help tell the story of what Jesus is trying to say to us uh, in making this statement. So again, it's John chapter 8, verse 12. This is where Jesus claims to be the light of the world. So let me just read the passage to us again. And it's this, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Yeah. So this is the second in the great seven I am statements that Jesus made about himself. Now this phrase, I am, we're going to see this that phrase quite a bit throughout the Gospel of John. And I want to just bring us all back up to speed. When Jesus uses that, he is claiming the same name that God the Father claimed for himself. Yes, so right. when Moses was there uh, in Midian and the bush started to burn and he heard the voice, that was the voice of God. And this conversation ensued. And Moses said, well, when I go to the people, who am I to tell them has sent me? Mm -hmm. And God said, I am who I am. That's God's name. That's the name that he sh is going to be remembered forever. And it's just saying he is who he is. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing that needs to be added to God. There's nothing that can be taken away from God. He is sufficient in and of himself. Mm -hmm. And because he is sufficient in and of himself, he has something for you and me that everything else that has come from God has 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 been derived from who he is. That includes us. Yes. So if we're going to find our sufficiency, if we're going to find completeness, if we're going to find satisfaction for the soul, then there's only one place to go, and that's God himself. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus comes on the scene, and he is God in human flesh, and he makes that known to the people, and he claims to be the great I am. The same God that spoke to Moses from the burning bush is the same one speaking in and through the person of Jesus Christ. So he claimed to be the bread of life. We talked about that last week. Here we're going to look at this claim that he is the light of the world. Now in 1 John chapter 1, we see this statement. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light and in him is no darkness mm -hmm. at all. So we see here these two dots connecting. Jesus is the light of the world. John saying God is light. So who is Jesus? Well, he's God. He is the light of the world. Why? Because God is light. So if Jesus is claiming to be the light of the world, guess what? He's claiming to be God in human flesh. So let's make some, some observations about this passage in John uh, chapter 8, mm -hmm. verse 12. Now, Jesus was at the temple. He was in Jerusalem. So he made this statement at the temple, and he made it during one of the three festivals that all the Jewish people would go back to Jerusalem to celebrate. And this was the third of those three festivals. It's called the Festival of Shel Shelters or the Feast of Booths. It came at the end of the harvest season, probably six months after Passover, mm -hmm. six months before the next Passover. Yeah. So that's when this occurred. And he spoke these words while he was uh, in the temple at a place called the treasury. So we see that uh, in verse 24, I believe, 
or, or in verse 21, that this was at the treasury in the temple. So it's interesting that Jesus is in the, in the treasury and he's saying, I'm the light of the world. Well, why was he there? Why was he at that particular place? Well, a couple of reasons. One, this treasury was, uh, was in, inside the court of the women. So both men and women could be in this particular court. Mm-hmm. Well, Jesus spent lots of times in, in this particular courtyard. Why? Because he wanted both men and women to hear what he was saying. He wanted both men and women to know what he was teaching about God the Father. Mm-hmm. So that's why he was there. Also, during this uh, festival of shepherd shelters, and this was in honor of uh the 40 years and, and how uh, they lived in tents during that time and their escape from Egypt mm-hmm. on their journey to the promised land. Right. So this it was in honor of that. Well, during this particular festival, uh, and, and there's many variations on, on how this actually took place, but they had uh, some bowls, gold bowls, And they would fill those bowls with oil and light them. So there would be light coming out from this courtyard uh, going out toward the world. It was symbolic of this light reaching all nations. Well, it was during that time when those bowls were lit that Jesus stood there and made this statement, I am Mm. the light of the world. Interesting. I'm the one that's going to be the blessing not only to you, Israel, but to all people everywhere. He's the light of the world, not just the light of Israel, but the light of the world. Now, it's interesting, like last week when we looked at John chapter 6, and Jesus has claimed to be the bread of life, that theme carried out throughout that chapter. Mm -hmm. Four different times he said, I am the bread of life. Uh, and he, he alluded to that in many other of his statements. When you read from verse 12 all the way to the end of chapter 8, verse verse 12 is the only verse that light is mentioned. Mm-hmm. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, but he does talk a lot about freedom, freedom from sin, uh, freedom coming through the sun, Uh, that unless you believe that he is, you're going to die in your sins. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of that kind of talk in John chapter 8, but never again does he mention that he is the light of the world. Only in this one singular statement does he say, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, this theme, although it's only contained in this one verse in this particular chapter, it's a theme that spans the breadth of Scripture from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Going back to Genesis chapter 1, we read this, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So in the beginning was God, and what we see that before there was anything created. The earth was uh, without form and void. Mm-hmm. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And then the voice of God said, let there be light. And light entered in. Mm-hmm. And so we see light is a theme from the very get-go. And then at the end of Revelation, We see this, and there will be no longer any night, and they will not have need of the light of a lamp nor the light of the sun, because the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. So we see light from beginning to end, and Jesus himself here in John chapter 8 claims to be that light. Now, in making this proclamation and making this claim, he is claiming to be God in human flesh. We've already talked about that. The fact that he says, I am, it's the exact same name God had in the Old Testament, Mm -hmm, Yahweh. Jesus Christ is our Yahweh. So not only is he saying that he is the I am, he's saying that he is 
the Messiah. So there was something in the Old Testament that said that God was going to send someone that was going to be the light of the world, and that someone was going to be the Messiah. So, for example, in Isaiah 42, 6, this is also in Isaiah 49, verse 6 as well, we see this, I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness, I will take you by the hand and keep you, and I will give you as a covenant for the people a light for the nations. And what is this light for? It is to open the eyes that are blind. It is to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. So this is the promise of God to send a person, to send a, to send a Messiah to do something for the people, to rescue them out of the realm of darkness and usher them in to the realm of light. Well, it's Basic Gospel, friends, and you're listening to Lesson 4 of our study entitled The Great I Am. Today's lesson, The Light of the World. And Bob Christopher will be back in just a moment. But let me re- quickly remind you that if you miss any of the lessons along the way or if you'd like to review what you've already heard, you can find the archive at basicgospel.net slash teaching. You'll not only find past lessons there, but also the study notes to go along with each session. It's all free, and we hope you'll review the lessons and share them with your family and friends. And again, just visit basicgospel.net slash teaching. But for right now, back to Lesson 4 of The Great I Am, and here again is Bob Christopher. Well, thanks, Bob. Uh, You know, when you look at the different passages that talk about light, that Jesus is the light of the world, there's always a connection to life. Yes. uh, That he is the light of life. And I think that is so vitally important for us to really understand because without light, we're not going to experience life as God intends intends us to experience. So I want to go back to John chapter 1, and we're going to bring this theme forward. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's how John starts out his gospel account. So it, it it really parallels to Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God. Right. And uh, that's, that's exactly what John is saying here. Now he adds some substance to that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word was there in the beginning, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now this Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so we know who John is talking about. He's talking about Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And in him, in Jesus Christ, was life, and the life was the light of men. Now the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So this light is really the very life of Jesus Christ. So until he came into this world, the world uh, existed in darkness. Uh, There were moments in time where God intervened and and gave uh, mankind some hope and talked about the promise of this one who was to come. Uh, But until this this time, the world kind of functioned in darkness. But now Jesus Christ is entered in, and in him is life. And this life is the light of men, and this light, when Jesus entered into this world, this light started to shine in the darkness, and the darkness has no power to overcome it. So I want to make some key observations about this particular passage, verses 1 through 5 of John chapter 1. So in Christ is life, okay? That's that's the message that John wants us to hear and to believe more than any other. If you will, if you will track through uh, the book of John and underline the word life, you're going to see it everywhere. Why? Because Jesus Christ came that we might have life. At the very end of the gospel message, John says, uh, "I I could have written just." just volumes and volumes and volumes of things that Jesus said and did. 
but the things that I have written I did for this purpose, so that you may know that he is the son of the living God, that he truly is who he claimed to be, and that in believing that, you will have life in his name. So why did John write? What does he want us to know about Jesus? That in him is life. When we believe in Jesus, then we're going to receive and experience life. Yeah. So he is uh, his life is the light of men. When we receive him, we receive that life, and we become lights in this world of darkness. We begin to reflect the very light of Jesus Christ out there into this world. The second thing that we need to observe out of this past passage, darkness cannot overcome the life of Jesus Christ. No matter how hard it tries, no matter how um, much time and energy and effort and planning darkness does, it will never be enough to overcome the light of Jesus Christ. And then these last two observations are vitally important. When we read darkness in the Word of God, whether it's the Old Testament or whether it's new, it equals death. Yes. The realm of darkness is death. The realm of light is life. So when we read about light, we're reading about eternal life. Mm -hmm. So if you're in darkness, guess what? You're dead spiritually. What's the solution? The light of the world, Jesus Christ himself. And when you follow him, you're going to walk in light and you will know, never, ever walk in darkness again. So light equals life. Yes. When you have been rescued out of darkness, it is because you have crossed over from death to life mm -hmm. by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Indeed. Well, with Bob Christopher, I'm Bob Davis, and you're listening to Lesson 4 of our Friday teaching series, The Great I Am. Today's subtitle is uh, The Light of the World. And here at Basic Gospel, uh, well, we know that there are countless issues that our listeners deal with every day. It could be about remarriage after divorce. It could be understanding uh, who you are, your identity as a child of God, even selecting the right Bible for you. And all those are just a few of the issues that Bob has addressed in the videos that are available at basicgospel.net slash YouTube. It's all there for you, and it's all free again at basicgospel.net slash YouTube. Now let's get back to Bob and this insightful study called The Great I Am, and it's the light of the world. Yes, it, yes, it is. So Jesus Christ claimed to be the light of the world, and indeed, that's who he is. And those of us who follow him... Um, we experience life, and we never walk in darkness again. That's the good news. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to look at some other passages that really uh, underscore that truth. In John twelve forty six, we read this, I have come into the world as light. This is Jesus Christ speaking. So he's come into this world of darkness as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're not going to remain in darkness. Now to the Apostle Paul. Uh, this was a part of Paul's testimony. This was a part of Paul's sending by Jesus Christ of him out there into the world. He says, I am sending you, Paul, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. So within the realm of darkness, the power of Satan reigns. Mm -hmm. But within the realm of light, it's, it's the power of God. And when we turn from darkness to light, we receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So part of our salvation is turning from darkness to light, turning from the power of Satan to the power of God, and in turning to the power of God, we receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians 4, 6, Paul says this, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, and that's exactly what happened in the creation account and now in Jesus Christ. This God has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face 
of Jesus Christ. Why does God want us to see the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ? Because he is the light of the world. He is the light of life. In him is life everlasting. When we turn to him by faith, here's what happens. Paul put it this way in Colossians 1, 13 through 14. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So what happens? It's a rescue. It's a rescue mission. We were trapped in the realm of darkness. We had no ability to liberate ourselves from that realm. We may have tried with every ounce of strength within us, but at the end, we were still dead, trapped in darkness. God sent Jesus as the light of this world. Jesus entered into that realm of darkness. He took upon himself our sins Mm -hmm. so that we could be made alive together with him. He rescued us. He snatched us out of the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And it's in that kingdom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Yeah. Man, it could make a great movie, couldn't it? <laughs> oh, say, man, yeah. filled with all sorts of intrigue and and all c- kinds of stuff that would just Ribbit you. keep yeah. us riveted yeah. right, right to the screen. Absolutely. So, We have been rescued by Jesus Christ. Out of the darkness into light. Now, Paul puts it this way in Ephesians 5, 8. For at one time you were darkness. Not only do we learn that we were in the realm of darkness, at one time we were just darkness. That's who we are. Why? Because we were dead in trespasses and sins. We followed the ways of this world. Uh, we were controlled by the prince of the power of air, of the air. We were by nature children of wrath like the rest. That's who we were. That's darkness. Yes. That's darkness. That was our identity as human beings. And, and part of being darkness is that we're lost. I mean, there's no way to figure out where we're going. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have no form or shape to life. It's just chaos constantly. We're being pinged from here to here to here with, with no sense of purpose, no sense of destiny, no sense of a place that we're going. That's what it meant to be in darkness. But just as God put put shape and form to the world when he spoke and he filled the void with life. That's what he does with us. Uh, He fills us with his very life. And then that life begins to shape us and form us and, and give structure to who we are as children of God. So at one time we were darkness, but now we are light in the Lord And now we have direction. Now we have form. Now we have shape. Now we have purpose. And therefore, God says, walk as children of light. Let this new identity, let this creative power that has taken you out of the realm of darkness and placed you into the kingdom of his son, allow that, that force of light to shape you and mold you and empower you to live out who you are as a child of the King. And there's no better place to be and no better identity to have than being a child of God. That's exactly right. Thank you, Bob, for those wonderful thoughts. And friends, thank you for joining us for Lesson 4 of The Great I Am. And if you'd like to have the study notes from each of these Friday sessions, visit the program archive at basicgospel.net slash teaching. And on that page, you can also catch up with any of the sessions you may have missed along the way. It's all free, and we encourage you to share them with your family and friends. Once again, basicgospel.net slash teaching. Also, if what you hear on this broadcast is helping you grow in God's grace, please support Basic Gospel and help us keep the good news coming. Donate now or anytime at basicgospel.net. Well, now for Bob Christopher and the ministry team, I'm Bob Davis, inviting you back again on Monday for Basic Gospel. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.